Revenge is indeed the dish best served cold. The cranes did just that when they played Nigeria's Super Eagles in June of 2007. As if Adam Semugabe's penalty miss in 1993 was not painful enough, a wrongfully disallowed Geoffrey Serunkuma header in an AFCON qualifier in 2006 turned the dagger in. Trailing to a Nwanku Kanu goal, cranes thought they had equalized when Serunkuma headed home at the death. Badara Diata, however, thought otherwise. Cranes got their revenge when Geoffrey Massa won two penalties in the reverse fixture. David Obua and Ibrahim Sekaja made no mistake from six yards as the Cranes ran out 2-1 winners. A win away to Lesotho would put Uganda within touch distance of qualifying for the 2008 AFCON finals. Lesotho were expected to put up little, if any, resistance. The corresponding fixture had seen Massa run rings around them as Uganda notched a comfortable 3-0 win at home. I traveled to Maseru, Lesotho's sleepy capital, to see if Massa would repeat his heroics. On match day, both Cranes fans and players were in high spirits. Inside the dressing room at the tiny Sesotho National Stadium, then Cranes coach Laszlo Chaba appeared relaxed after losing his court. It's safe to say that the Cranes fans expected this to be a walk in the park. It wasn't. Massa, seen here striding onto the pitch with the ball, missed a truckload of sitters. The match ended goalless. Jackson Mayanja was the assistant coach when the Cranes came unstuck in 2007. He says the recurring theme of Uganda scoring few or no goals is down to the absence of creative midfielders. Whom do we have in Uganda today? A creative midfielder. The one who does anything on that ball at this moment for these strikers. That when Massa goes off like this, just a flash of a second, the ball is in the deep. Pop! He releases the man. And Massa goes to score. Or oh, Okwi goes to score. Or oh, Diego Kiza goes to score. Portugal based midfield Dynamo, Chizito Luaga, has thrown his heart in the ring in the 2013 AFCON campaign. Mayanja says if an well, Luaga could fill what has been an apparent void for the cranes. Luaga Chizito, I you see sometimes it has been always punching my head to see that I could look for one player who could do anything with that ball. So when I was in Bonamwaya, I saw that young man, Shinichitende. Today is a profession, I'm very happy to see that. And he knows it. Renowned youth coach Eddie Butindo advises Luwaga to avoid the trappings of fame that include the hyperbole of the local media. It Sometimes I blame the journalists. They heap praise over these younger kids. They are very young, they have not done anything. But they are heaped praise and within a short time, most Ugandan youth have collapsed. It's hard to tell whether Luwaga would have changed the crane's narrative back in June of 27 when they drew a blank in Maseru. That draw meant that Nigeria remained in pole position to top Group 3. The door was still ajar for the crane's door. A convincing win at home to Niger would secure Uganda a ticket to the 2008 AFCON finals as one of the best second place teams. David Obua scored a stunning hat trick to secure Uganda a 3 1 win at Nambole. But as it turned out, the effort wasn't enough. Tunisia, Benin, and South Africa occupied the three top echelons on the best runners up table in that order. Had Uganda scored two more goals in that campaign, it would have featured at the 2008 finals in Ghana. So, in a nutshell, David Obua's five goals proved to be in vain. Obua was back among the goals in the 2012 AFCON qualifying campaign. It was, however, a campaign the attacker will be in a hurry to forget, as we'll see in the fourth part of So Close, but so far. Robert Madoy, NTV Sport. Oh.